to a tough start, one and four to start the season. Joel Embiid's yet to play a game. Paul George is yet to play a game. However, Paul George is set to make his return tonight against the Phoenix Suns. And we had some drama. We had some drama unsue, some drama unfold in the Philadelphia 76ers locker room following a loss on Saturday night. Was it Saturday night or Friday night? What? One of the nights of the week. Joel Embiid reportedly got into it with a reporter to the point where a punch might have been thrown, but they say that it's a shove. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I would have to imagine it's probably a punch and that they're trying to, you know, they're trying to reel it in a little bit. Keith Pompey tweeted out. This was on a Saturday night. Keith Pompey tweeted out, who's a reporter for the Philadelphia 76ers, Philly Inquirer. Oh boy, people remember the Sixers season for all the wrong reasons. The team just dropped a 1-4 and Joel Embiid assaulted a reporter in the locker room. Somebody re- replied to him and said, assaulted is a strong word or something like that. And then Keith Pompey said, he punched him. Now he went on to delete that tweet. Keith Pompey did delete the he punched him tweet. And then we got some clarification from the one, the only Shams, Trania. Who um, had this to say. 76ers center. Joel Embiid got in an altercation with a columnist. Columnist. Why do I have a hard time saying that word? Columnist. Following tonight's game in Philadelphia, Embiid took issue with a recent column that referenced his late brother and son, and Embiid shoved the columnist. No punch. So uh, this was this was building up. The, uh, the columnist in question, Marcus Hayes, is that his name? Marcus Hayes, who is a reporter for... Uh, Inquirer, the Philly Inquirer, I guess. Who had a pretty scathing article about Joel Embiid before the season started. Joel Embiid, when Joel Embiid had that quote that was going around where he said, I do too fucking much for this city to see this, uh, to see some of these things said about me. He was referencing this and he mentioned this guy by name in that, in that uh, interview that he had in the press conference, whatever it was, little locker, locker side interview. So let's talk about this. (laughs) Uh, I want to start here. I don't condone violence really at all. I'm not going to be one of these people who get on here I saw so many of these fucking people and it's so funny to me. So many, I'm not gonna be honest people who grandstand and get on here and are like, I think we should do this more. I'm, I'm saying let athletes carte blanche athletes get to punch reporters. Uh, hey, normalize this. I'm gonna say right now, don't normalize this. Okay. Now I'm not saying I condone this or I don't condone this or this person didn't have it coming. We'll get to that in a second. I'm not going to say, yeah, um, we should make it a thing where athletes can assault reporters. That's absolutely fucking nuts. And I just, I find it funny. I was looking at like the Reddit section here and it was like, uh, people were like, I would have done worse. I would have done the same thing. It's like, let's be honest. No, you wouldn't have. I hate when people do this online. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. No, you wouldn't. Okay. You're on a Reddit form on a Saturday night. You're not doing anything to anybody. Okay. Not, I, I wouldn't either, but I'm not going around saying, yeah, I would have punched him as well. I would have done worse. I would have put hands and feet on him. No, you would not have. Okay. Let's just start there. But am I going to say I feel bad for this reporter or that he didn't deserve it in some way? No, I will not. This, this Marcus Hayes guy completely went off the rails in a, a piece that he wrote about Joel Embiid. This was the quote here that everybody was talking about. Joel Embiid consistently points to the birth of his son, Arthur, as the major inflection point of his career. He often says that he wants to be great to leave a legacy for the boy named after his little brother. Well, Joel's brother passed away 10 years ago in a tragic car accident at the age of 13. Okay, this is... What the fuck is this shit tweet? I'm sorry. I'm trying to find the actual article that uh, spurned all of this. Not that horrible tweet. An article about an article. Folks, is this where we're at? 
All right, here's what Marcus Hayes wrote about Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid consistently points to the birth of his son, Arthur, as a major inflection point in his basketball career. He often says that he wants to be great, to leave a legacy for the boy named after his little brother, who tragically died in an automobile accident when Embiid was his, in his first year as a 76er. Well, all right, let's just say here, if you're a sports reporter and you're writing a piece about somebody and you are referencing somebody's dead relative, okay, and your next sentence starts with a well, You, you should stop. Well, in order to be great at your job, you first have to show up to work. Embiid has been great at just the opposite. Now in his 11th season, he consistently has been in poor condition. This poor conditioning apparently seems to have delayed his debut this season. Embiid won't play and wins his opener for the next two games. Um, I mean, it kind of goes off. I mean, he really goes off on Embiid in this article. Some of this stuff is like, the, the, the gist of the remainder of the article is it's not fair to the fans who are paying X amount of dollars that you're not ready to start the season. That's a completely different conversation, okay? Uh, this idea that Marcus Hayes wrote, insinuating basically that Joel Embiid's son and Joel Embiid's late brother would be disappointed or <laughs> upset with Joel Embiid because he's not ready to play for the NBA season. Is so fucking insane. Think about think about what what's being said here. Yes, Marcus says I'm sure Joel Embiid's late brother and his son are very disappointed that his mega millionaire dad, his mega millionaire dad, who's one of the what four thousand people in the history of the world to play in the National Basketball Association and is one of the greatest to ever do it, isn't ready to start the the season in October of 2024. I'm sure he's very upset. Do you forget to tweet about the live? I don't I don't tweet about these lives anymore. I don't just want to spam my Twitter timeline with five links a day. I don't really think it makes much of a difference, to be honest. So anyways, do I condone it? Will I say that report, uh, reporters should get their ass beat in the locker room? No, I wouldn't say that. I would not say that. But do I feel bad for this guy? No. If you write about uh, really anybody's, but athletes, dead relatives in a way like this, there you should you should expect there to be tension and turmoil. It's the moral code we have as men. If you talk too much, you will get punched, and you deserve to be punched. Again, I'm not saying athletes should go about it, but yes, that is, if you write about somebody's dead relative like this, you open yourself up to a litany of possibilities, all right? That's just the reality. I, w I wouldn't do it. That's not, you know, I guess I can't say I wouldn't do it, but uh, apparently from what it sounded like, from what I saw, I, I saw a, uh, on the Philly show, there's like a, you know how they have the Dallas, the Denver, there's a Philly show as well. Uh, worst article in NBA history, maybe up there. But the, the, this altercation went on for like two minutes before the shove happened. Shove slash punch. There's got to be a video of it somewhere. TMZ, TMZ's got it. TMZ's got it somewhere. It is bad journalism. Look, if you want to make the argument that, hey, man, you kind of owe it to the fans. Like, these fans pay a lot of money. Nobody, if that's more of a thing to take up with the Philadelphia 76ers organization, I would say, where it's like, hey, guys, what the fuck? Like, people pay a ton of money to go to opening night. You know, a ton of money. Like, opening night tickets are four or five times more expensive than normal tickets. Like, people pay to go to it. And then you, a day before the game starts, say that Joel Embiid and Paul George aren't going to play. You know? Like, that's fucked up. Okay, you're right, Xavier. I did just remember. It, apparently, in the altercation, Joel Embiid said, I don't care what media members say about me. And Marcus Hayes said, yes, you do. And then that, that spurned it. Now, Embiid does care, I think, a tiny bit. But hey, look. Again, if you mention somebody's son. I mean, let's forget the dead relative part. That's bad enough. Son... You mentioned somebody's child in like a, a way to like shit on a player. 
you you open yourself up. That's all I'll say. And then on top of that, you put on a dead relative. Yeah. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you. Nobody is going to feel sorry for you. Nobody is going to, nobody who's a serious person is going to be like, fuck Joel Embiid. I saw some, uh, <laughs> I actually don't think anything comes from this, to be honest with you. But I saw people who were like, he's going to be suspended before he even plays. I Again, I that he's suspended. And then I saw people reply to that and like, he's going to be in jail. And I'm like, oh my God. Do you guys never go outside? Honestly. Some, some people who say, who talk like that, he, he might go to jail. Have you ever stepped foot outside? Have you ever stepped foot in like a competitive setting? Absolutely insane. Can't honor your dead relative on the sidelines. I'm going to, I'm going to say this, you know what? I'm going to go out there and say this. I think being on an NBA sideline by itself is honoring anybody in your family. Just going to say that the percentage of people who make it to that level are so small. I think pretty much everybody in Joel Embiid's family and his ancestry is proud of him. I'll just venture to guess that. Okay. That's just me. That's just me making an educated guess. I, I think they're pretty happy about him. You know, the reporter sucks given how the internet was universally on Embiid's side. Yeah, I, I will say Sixer, the Sixers and really Philly in general. Sports fans absolutely hate their. Uh, absolutely hate their reporters. So that shows you something. Now, Philly people hate everyone. So that's not saying a lot. Sadly, what games are you watching will be the most entertaining to watch tonight? We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So anyways, uh, the Joel Embiid situation. Just uh, weird vibes in Philly, man. Weird vibes in Philly. I, I do kind of feel for Joel Embiid because I don't know what's going on. Because if, if there might be a knee problem, and th this, would not be, this would not be Joel Embiid's fault. There might be a knee problem that the Sixers are a little hush-hush about because it does not make much sense. This Embiid thing does not make a lot of sense that he wasn't ready to start the season. I don't know when he plays his first game. He, he's doing five-on-five five stuff, so I'd have to imagine it is soon. But I, I'd have to guess that there was a new thing that they didn't want to tell the league about. I mean, they got fined $100,000. So something definitely happened. That much is certain. But anyways, you talk about a dead family member or a child. Yeah. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you. That's the reality.